so welcome and good morning. Um, today I'd uh, like to talk to you about Colin and Zdravomil, the LinkedIn heroes. Uh, this talk will be mostly about um, maintaining containers and making sure that they are following the best practices. Uh, so let's start with the most important th thing, and that is uh, why should we care? Uh, and that's uh, best practices. Um, there are a lot of, lot of rules and practices that you should follow or uh, you want to follow. Um, most of them that are written, for example, in um, Docker, Docker, Docker documentation. Uh, there are something like uh, your Docker file should contain um, from instruction should have a base image or, or uh, there should be a maintainer label, label and, and so on. So uh, these are some, some rules. Uh, if you maintain uh, Fedora containers, you should follow Fedora guidelines. So there's another set of rules. And um, also, um, you, you need to make sure that your containers are, are healthy. Uh, so you need to take care that uh, you, your containers doesn't drink up too much memory or resources, and uh, you should not put secrets in your containers. So as a container maintainer, you might have a lot of things you have to, have to think about, and it might be hard for you if I have uh, tense images to, to keep track of every one of them if, if they are nice or, or not. Um, so that's why we at Red Hat in user space containerization team, we we're thinking how to make it uh, less painful, how to, how to improve the, the experience in maintaining containers. And uh, we were thinking about some, some tool that would cover some part of the, of the rules. So what we needed was container linter, and we created Colin. So let me introduce to you Colin. Uh, Colin is, um, is a tool that is covering uh, the so it is covering the, the best practices uh, that are in Fedora or that are co common for all images. So it has a really nice CLI. I will show it to you in a demo. Uh, it is it's just lightweight. It has some important things, and it's really easy to use. Uh, if you want Colin to be used in a CI and you like Python, you can use Python API. Um, and uh, as I said, Colin, Colin in its core contains rules for Fedora and for all images. But uh, in my opinion, the strongest thing about Colin is that um, you can create your custom rule sets, your custom set of rules that you want to apply for, for a, a group of images. If you have uh, some distribution or if you have a team, uh, you, can, you can create your own rule set and uh, create, like, uh, Run it uh, against it. Uh, run your containers against the rules. Uh, we at Red Hat, we for example have uh, two another rule sets. One is for um, the best practices, and it's run on thousands, thousands, thousands of images. Um, and another is um, it's smaller, and it is actually gating some of the images. So that's why we can do with that. And um, I was talking about uh, images, but uh, Colin can also. Uh, lint uh, docker files and OS3. Okay, uh, so I was talking about rules, and it might be not clear what is what is rule, what is check when you when you talk with uh, about in a Colin namespace. So check is a Python is Python class implementing the logic, and um, it uh, actually is the place where you run the Potman binary or, or API. It's the place where you run Dockerfile parser to, to see the, the labels and so on and so on. So uh, that's it. With the Python class, you also have metadata. There's a description, reference URL. The URL should um, point to, the, for example, the Fedora guidelines or, or the documentation. The source where, where, the, where the common rule is, uh, um, is described. And also some tags. You can tag your, your check that uh, if it uh, is required or optional for which target it is, uh, it can be used and so on. Uh, okay, so we have the checks, but uh, we need to specify that I have, for example, the Fedora. What checks are um, 
applied to Fedora. And uh, so, so you create the rule set. Rule set is a JSON or YAML image. You can choose. It's really easy to use, easy to write. Um, and you can, um, there are some, there's the checks. But uh, you may have some additional things that uh, are not in a check. We have a check that is checking check uh, maintenance label. And uh, default, by default, it is not required, for example. And uh, you might want to make it required. So you can add some additional data to the, to the check. So these are rule sets. So I, I, maybe I'm boring you. So <laughs> I will now create a, no, uh, do a demo to show you that I'm not lying. <clears throat> okay, so let's see the help, help page first. These are the things that you can do with Colin. Uh, the check itself lists some the information. So let's uh, see. Um, oh. The, no. Okay, as I said, there's Fedora and the default rule set. And let's see what is in the Fedora rule set, how, how it looks like. Uh, oh, what did I do? <laughs> uh, sorry. Okay, this is it. <clears throat> uh, this is the rule set, as I, as I said. Uh, it's JSON file. There, these are the, the names are the, the pointers, not pointers, but uh, they reference the, the check, which is in Python code. So all these are, are optional in Fedora. Um, these checks, maintain a label, name label, these are actually required in Fedora. <coughs> these three are required and uh, applicable only to Docker files and so on and so on. So, um, but if, if you want to see how it looks like uh, the, the check itself with the rule set and what's the, what's the output, <clears throat> we can... Uh, list the checks. Okay. Yes, and uh, I didn't didn't uh, add uh, the the parameter that is for federal rule set. So now we see default checks, um, and uh, actually they they point to federal guidelines, um, and the Docker Docker documentation. So. Let's see if, it, if it's correct. Okay, here you can see that, uh, yes, there are some labels, some optional, some required, and uh, you can believe that Colin is telling the truth. If I want to see checks for Fedora, these are here. The, the set is bigger, larger, yes. So let's see how it works. Um, maybe you may notice that uh, we use uh, Podman, not Dockerfile. And if you want to know the reasons, um, you can uh, check the pr presentation from yesterday's about Podman. Um, yes, that should be explain explained there uh, nicely. So we like Podman now. And um, uh, so, but uh, I, I personally uh, use Docker now because I, I'm used to it, so I have uh, some images, and um, I, I want to. These are local; they, they are not in on, in Docker Hub yet. But uh, I want to make sure that they are okay. So I run Colin. Yes, and actually it is not found 
and that's because uh, it should be in Podman. And uh, um, oh, sorry. Yes, and we can see that Ucho is not there, but uh, Zdravomil is there. So we can run check against Zdravomil. First of all, I would like to uh, show how to, how to uh, move uh, image from Docker to Podman, uh, so you can use it. Mm. I don't know. This is how you do it. I hopefully did it yesterday. Yes, I did. And okay. It, it would take longer if it wasn't done. So let's uh, make the check against Dravomil. Okay, and we can see that it's not, not so, so good. <laughs> there are some missing things. Um, but yes, they are fail, failing, but I don't know why, and I don't know why should I care. So <clears throat> I can run, run it in verbose mode and uh, see the, the, the description, some, some, some words about uh, why is this important, reference, and uh, some logs for that, that may, be, may be present, for example, in this help file. Uh, you can have help. Uh, dot one or readme md, they are both no present. Um, so this was uh, checking the images, but we can check also Docker files. Mm. Yes, and um, this is checking the Docker files. You can see that the, the checks are, are not uh, the same. Um, there are more checks for Docker file, for example, and they are uh, a bit different. Then there is there is no uh, check for help page. Uh, you can you can see it yourself. And I was I was talking about the Python API, so Colin can be run easily. Um, <clears throat> there, this is this is the simple one method. Just you call and then you get the result, and uh, you can take a pretty string from it or, or JSON and do whatever it in it. And um, this, the last part of the, of the demo, is uh, used by uh, another hero, and um, that is <clears throat> that is Zdravomil. Okay, so Zdravomil is a container that uh, in its core contains Colin, and uh, it adds some and other things uh, that uh, uh, might be important. Zdravomil is a member of our user bot family, and um, uh, these, these, these bots are, are there for you to, to do the things you would do uh, manually otherwise. So it, it should... It should um, it should act a little bit as a human. That's why it has a human name. And uh, what, what it does, uh, when there is a new, new pull request on, the, uh, on GitHub, Zdravomil will uh, see that, and uh, it will trigger the call-in uh, runs and um, report the results in the pull request comment. Um, so that's it. Uh, we have actually an uh, internal version of Zdravomil that is, <clears throat> uh, that, that is do doing, so, that has another things in it um, added. So it, it can do blacklisting, it can do uh, sending emails or sending messages to some uh, message bus. Um, but, um, yeah. Okay, it's not working. Okay. No, well, um, but uh, moment, uh, at the moment, uh, we have um, open source only a smart part of uh, Zdravomil. 
and it is not running anywhere as a service. Um, so it actually needs a lot of love. So if you if you have the energy and if motivation, you, we are welcome to to contribute. It should be really easy because it's in Python and and there are so many ways to improve that. So um, what, what uh, is there is that uh, Zdravomil runs in uh, uh, OpenShift and um, is using Celery for, for, for the triggering and for, uh, for recording the task. Uh, it has to be used with Ucho, and Ucho is actually another bot which is resp responsible for, uh, for um, listening to the events that are happening in the infrastructure. And when some event happens, Ucho can catch that and um, run a trigger for, for Zdravomil, send a task for Zdravomil. And um, also, Ucho doesn't work only with Zdravomil, but uh, it can trigger all sorts of bots. So if you want to create your own bots, you can use Ucho, and um, it, will, it will work nicely. Actually, yesterday I was looking at our internal Ucho, and I, was, I, I found out that two months nobody touched it, and it works OK. So that's how it should be. Um, OK, so enough talk. Let's have another demo. So let's see the Ucho and Zdravomil in action. Okay. This is how the configuration looks like. Uh, the first one is the topic uh, on fed message. And the second one is the name of the salary task that should be triggered on the event on the topic. <clears throat> so let's start it. It, it was pre-built, so now it's just uh, listening to GitHub. And let's hope it will work. The, the, um, Okay, so this is the Zdravomil, and let's have some um, pull request. For example, in this in this repository, and maybe notice that uh, there there was also topic that uh, uh, Ucho catches and it's pull request comment. So let's comment. Okay, so Ucho received the task. It sent the task to Zdravomil. Zdravomil is actually already finished with the results. Um, yes, so nobody, but nobody looks at these logs. Let's see how it looks like in the in the pull request. And yes, just a few seconds, and we have we have the results in past bin. So it's really usable, usable lightweight. Um, but uh, I have written in the slides that uh, you know this Ucho needs uh, to listen to Fed message, and uh, GitHub by default doesn't send out uh, events to Fed message. Uh, so you need to configure your repository to uh, to make this for you. It is uh, a webhook. <coughs> so. It's done in, in the settings, webhooks, and you can see that we have the GitHub to Fed message uh, webhook. This is, this is how it looks like. These are all the, the events that were sent. Yeah, that's really nice. Um, okay, so that, that should be all. So I hope you liked it. So this is the here is now is the place for questions. Do you have any questions? Yes. What, what, what other bots? Um, 
<laughs> uh, okay, there was a question, uh, what other, other bots uh, are, are members of, of the bot family? And uh, we actually have, um, we actually have uh, Solania. Solania is responsible for um, push automatic, um, automatic triggering of uh, scratch builds on, on pull requests. So you can actually right away see that uh, the build uh, passes or not, even before pushing to this git. We have, uh, Solania also does uh, mass builds before updates. Solania does uh, builds, automatic builds after pushing to this git, after the actual change is, is there. Uh, we have also Ferdinand that is uh, responsible for updating uh, Bugzilla and uh, responsible for updating um, uh, the errata. Uh, yes, I think, I think they are all, are there any other? Yes, no. Okay, uh, so this is it. Um, yeah, and I, I, I think I, I forgotten, I forgotten one thing, and it's actually I've written in, in, a, in the expected questions, and that's it, that uh, Colin is not a testing interface. That's, that's really, really important. If you want to, to test your images, you can use Konu, PyTest, everything you need. But uh, th there's a lot of things. Colin should be runnable against a large group of images. So that's what I wanted to say. Okay, there, are there any other questions? Yes. Uh, right now only, uh, yes, so the question was if, if Solania uh, can do scratch builds on, on RPMs um, or, or, or just for containers. The truth is that uh, right now it uh, can do scratch builds only with uh, containers, but uh, we hope it will, it will be in the future possible to do it also with RPMs, maybe. Okay, another question? Um, okay. Uh, if there are no questions now, but if you have the questions in the future, you can definitely uh, create an issue in one of those repositories, or even better, you can contribute. It's really, uh, really welcomed. So thank you for all your attention, and have a nice day.